Yes, Nikita, you can start. Okay, sir. So hi everyone, a very good evening to my lovely audience and a special welcome to our guest, our uh, session expert today for Sunday Talkies, researchers talking from abroad. So before we move on to a special lecture, I would extend my warm welcome to our president, Microbiologist Society India, Professor Avind Kumar Deshmukh, and would like to share uh, his views and mission of MB MBSI with everyone. So I would like to request, sir, to just highlight the mission and vision of MBSI. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Nikita, madam. And uh, really, I must congratulate you for bringing such a jewels of the world in my biotechnology. And they are coming on our platform. And uh, we are recording their lecture as a permanent uh, recording. And uh, academic academicians from India are enjoying the lectures. And uh, today, really, I am happy to know that Maria Ma'am from the South America and a very important topic regarding biodiversity and symbiotic relationship and like this, the interesting topic. We are very happy to hear Maria Ma'am. And we'll see that sometimes she will come personally here and we'll have a work of offline interactions with Maria Ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Nikita ma'am, and uh, over to Nikita ma'am. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing the mission and vision of Microbiologist Society India. And yes, ma'am, we'll be calling you soon for an offline interaction with our researchers, students, and faculty. So without any further delay, I would like to introduce our session expert today. So she is Professor Maria Elena Kazar, and she's serving as a chair of the Department of Applied Chemistry and Production Systems, in addition, she is director of the Orchids Greenhouse Chemical Sciences and also a faculty in University of Puena, Ecuador, South America. Professor Maria has completed her PhD in natural products, research from University of Talca, Chile, and her expertise highlights bioactivity of secondary metabolites from plants and fungi and orchids mycorrhiza as a model for plant fungi relationship studies. She adds to her name many international publications and grants. Furthermore, she has, revised, uh, she has received many prestigious awards and recognition tags. She is working as the president of the Latin American Society of Medicinal Plants. Without any further delay, I would like to invite Professor Maria Elena Kazar for her talk on biodiversity, symbiotic relationship, and bioactivity of eucadronians orchids. So over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, dear Dr. Nikita. I'm really honored and happy to share with you some of my humble experience regarding natural products research and regarding the topic that join us together. Uh, I would like to thank the generous words from Dr. Desmuk. And also uh, I want to tell all of you that I'm really honored to be uh, in this moment in contact with the uh, Microbiology Society from India. So I would like to ask the permission for share my screen. Uh, just a moment, please. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm sorry. I think <laughs> I did it just a minute. You know, the technology sometimes. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. here we are. And I hope uh, I hope you are um, watching my screen, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's visible now. It's visible. Thank you so much. Well, um, the topic that join us here this morning is uh, regarding our biodiversity, our world biodiversity, and also the the relationship the relationship that uh, relates uh, in some places that we don't see because obviously we see all the wonders uh, of our world, but uh, the soil sometimes it's an um, underrated uh, resource. We don't uh, think of it like an important uh, 
an important uh, integrator of the ecosystem, but as microbiologists, we know that uh, there uh, we have a special richness uh, on the on fungi, on bacteria, uh, and uh, many many important relationships between plants and and fungi are key for our biodiversity and uh, also for the sustainability of our ecosystem. So I will um, follow this order of topics in this. Um, in this speech, we will start uh, to, uh, talking about orchids biodiversity. Afterwards, we are going to talk about plant fungi symbiot symbiotic relationship, then uh, some insights about uh, orchids bioactivity, and at the end, we will um, just uh, place some perspective. Uh, uh, I don't like to uh, call conclusions because they, uh, still we have so many things to do and to, uh, to collaborate for on building many, many uh, questions that we have still in our topic regarding biodiversity and regarding plant fungi relationship. So um, we will start with the first topic regarding orchids biodiversity. I know that we, even we are, as professor said, in different places of the world at the moment, we are in, like in the opposites of the world, but we have a beautiful and rich biodiversity. India is a big and beautiful country. Ecuador is a tiny little country in, the, in South America, but both of us have a beautiful richness in flowering plants and the Orchidaceae family is one of the largest groups of, flower, of flowering plants. We can count in more than 26,000 species and 85, um, 850 genera of, uh, of, of genera of, of uh, orchids. So we know the most beautiful, the ones that have a very astonishing flowers, we, we know about them, but uh, orchids uh, are very, very different. We have tiny little orchids that are uh, adapted to special environments. And also we have the big and uh, beautiful flowers that we see Common. And uh, the beautiful things about these uh, plants is they are uh, adapted to many different ecosystems. That's why they, they can be found uh, almost in uh, around the world, but they are, there are special places where, when, where they concentrate. And in South America, we have this uh, sit important situation. The, our, our part of the world is uh, crossed by the Andes mountains. And as you know, the Andes mountains has different altitudes. In this little country in Ecuador, we have the highest mountain called Chimborazo. And currently is the place uh, in, in our world is uh, the place that is closer to the sun. <laughs> so it's a big, big mountain about 6,000 meters high. And uh, this, uh, difference in altitude we have here um, is uh, a key element for our biodiversity because it's uh, these mountains in the middle of the of, of our country mark different ecosystems that's why we have uh, a lot of biodiversity plants biodiversity fungal biodiversity too and even mammals biodiversity but regarding the subject that gather us here. Here in our country, we have about 4,000 orchid species, which is a tremendous uh, number comparing with other bigger countries like Colombia that's closer to us. And uh, we know that we, we have a, a great assets regarding this, this family, but the problem is we have uh, also uh, some threats to, to our bi uh, orchids biodiversity because the soil uh, uses are changing. Obviously our country is pressed by economic and anthropic activities. Uh, the mining process, as you, as you know, the metal extractions, uh, they, uh, the big companies, they are going through the uh, rainforest, they are making roads and that changed dramatically the environment and the house of our orchids. So even we have, a lot of biodiversity, even we have 4,000 orchid species. 
close to 1,500 Ecuadorian orchids are listed according the uh, red list of the International Union of uh, Nature Conservation uh, in different threat status, status, I'm sorry. So this obviously it's a fact that uh, is worrying us and we need to focus many, many efforts to preserve our biodiversity. And orchids biodiversity is also an indicator of the health of the ecosystems. Because if we have orchids, it indicates that still we have a pristine ecosystem, but this situation is changing in a fast way. And that, uh, that is a worrying uh, reality that we, has to, that we have to face. And academia and uh, other uh, actors of our society must get involved in this. That's why uh, we, uh, um, we are very interested, uh, interested in to present orchids as a very, um, very beautiful and not just beautiful, but uh, interesting uh, topic of research. We want uh, young people, we want to, to establish connections for studying orchids because they, they are uh, very, uh, uh, they have very interesting facts, like the fact that they can live um, from 30 to 100 years. They are long lasting plants. They live in different environments, as I said before. They can uh, be adapted to terrestrial environments. They can live in relationship with uh, big trees in epiphytic forms. Also, in the, um, they can adapt to live in rocks in, in lithophytic forms, and, and they are saprophytic plants. So the roots of uh, plants that are epiphytics, the epiphytic orchids, they have a storage functions. They uh, keep nutrients in the roots. And also the, the leaves are different because they are succulents and they, uh, they have small, smaller stomatas for losing uh, humidity in a less rate comparing with terrestrial orchids. So all these, um, biodiversity of orchids that we have in our country that, as I told you, is uh, crossed by the Andes, the Andes mountains. And this fact divides our country in the coastal region that is um, influenced by the Pacific Ocean, the Andes that, as I told you, it has uh, bigger mountains, we have a higher altitude. And at the moment uh, I'm here in the southern part of the Andes more or less here. <laughs> and uh, then we have the, the rainforest, the Amazonian region, region, and uh, when we have a lot, a lot of biodiversity. And also the most famous Galapagos Islands that are um, uh, far from the coast, but they belong to our country. Obviously, this is a very different and unique environment. But in Ecuador, for these geographical regions, we have also very interesting um, a very interesting scenario for biodiversity. So I would like just to uh, spend a couple of minutes telling you about the efforts that my university do for orchids preservation. As uh, Dr. Nitika told you uh, at the beginning, I'm at the moment in charge of the orchids greenhouse from Universidad de Cuenca. This facility started in 1989, so it has a lot of uh, history at the moment. Uh, some professors from my university were interested in this topic. They started a orchids collection, and uh, we, uh, during the, the history of the of the orchid greenhouse, the methods, the research has improved. Dr. Eduardo Sanchez started with the uh, greenhouse establishments. Dr. Diego Vasquez in 1992 started the, um, all the process, the process of micropropagations in vitro cultures. With Dr. Rafael Anzaloni, we started to work together in 2011 for uh, mycorrhizal fun fungi research and when the pandemic started, <laughs> the direction of the greenhouse came to me and we started, uh, despite of the difficult situation, obviously the orchids didn't know that the pandemics were affecting us. So we have to keep working for them. And also we started with the studies on orchids bioactivity. So in this facility, we preserve about 350 orchid species. 
and this uh, species come comes from our collection and also we uh, receive orchids that are um, in different uh, conservation status also the one that the, our government um, finds for instance in illegal uh, trading we they they uh, take the orchids and give it to us for for preservation so we have this mission too and also we um, apply the micro propagation methods to try uh, to rescue the orchids and replace uh, replace them in natural environments and in, during this uh, history, we have also two new species characterized, characterized in our greenhouse, Oncidium universitas cuencae and Epidendrum morochoi. So the orchid greenhouse is a good contribution for rescue the threatened orchids and for preserving our biodiversity. We have uh, these uh, facilities, as, as you can see, we have an open greenhouse for orchids from cold environments, and we have also two uh, closed greenhouse for different uh, levels of temperature that, that orchids like. Well, uh, we expect to improve our facilities. Obviously, we need uh, uh, support for, so finger crossed, <laughs> we are applying to some funds for having uh, more funds for improving the facilities. Well, but all this uh, work, getting to know the orchids, lead us to start uh, seeing ahead, seeing about the relationship between orchids and fungi. And especially epiphyte orchids rely on fungal association for living because the, as you can see in this image, this is a capsule full with the, orchid seeds, they are tiny, they are like dust. And obviously they don't have, uh, they, they are depleted of any carbon source. They don't have uh, uh, carbohydrates, uh, car carbohydrates for starting their life. So they rely on an association with fungi, uh, obviously a beneficial association for fixing carbon and minerals. So they cannot photosynthesize at the beginning of, the, of their stage when they are well established, then they started to do uh, photosynthesis. So at the beginning, they rely completely in um, association with the special taxa of, of fungi to collect, to collect carbon from soil and also other nutrients. And uh, if we can, characterize this fungi, if we can uh, keep this fungi, uh, we can improve the propagation protocols because we can add this uh, fungi to the media and see if the this beneficial relationship can start from the beginning of in vitro cultures. So that's very important because the, the mycorrhization will be applicable to improve the in vitro reproduction. And this will, it can be also applied for, econ, for economic purposes because in my country, uh, Ecuador has an important asset uh, for flowers exportation. And also not for the macroeconomics, but also for the situation of uh, the people from, you know, the farmers, the people to, uh, that has a little and medium a greenhouse, they also uh, want to, to have uh, better incomes. So uh, even there are bigger, big companies selling orchids, there are, there are also medium size uh, and little farmers that are involved in this activity. So we think that the findings we have in our lab can be also uh, translated to meet and little farmers to improve their incomes and to uh, collaborate with this important economic activity from our country. So, well, there are, um, there are two, uh, two ways of approaching this problem. As we know, uh, now we have many, many tools for knowing fungal uh, identification. We can do the metagenomics that, um, some people think it's a, a, a better approach than the one that I will present you. They think that for getting to know the fungi, gender, and species, we, we, we uh, can 
have the complete biome, the root biome, and uh, doing a se sequencing, right? And we will ca characterize all the fungi, and we will know which fungi is myco uh, mycorrhizal fungi, because mycorrhizal fungi come from a special genera. So we need to, to be good in um, molecular biology to characterize these fungi. I think uh, I, uh, Nitika told you before, I'm a chemist. So I came here and, and I had to, you know, to, to gather um, training in, uh, in molecular, in, in microbiology tools and also in biotechnology tools. But for uh, specific molecular biology tools, obviously I have collaborations. We have, we are a multidisciplinary group. So for that reason, we decided to not take the, the metagenomics approach, but trying to isolate the fungi because we wanted to have the, the fungi for, you know, as I told you, for testing as a supplement for um, in vitro media and trying to improve the uh, germination and growing of in vitro cultures. That's why we started with a process isolating fungi from roots and trying to uh, obtain pure cultures. So the idea was to test the plant fungi symbiotic relationship with pure fungi in a model plant. So we, cho uh, we chose this plant, Epidendrum secundum, is an orchid that, the orchid is not the one that with beautiful and big flowers. It's an orchid with little flowers that uh, it, it has medicinal uses in Ecuador. Uh, people, the traditional medicines uh, uh, use this plant to treat nervous disorders and uh, also to control the fever during colds. So that's why we decided to, to use this orchid because also it has um, another interest for us that was the medicinal properties. So we started to isolate mycorrhizal fungi from orchids in different ecosystems, not epidendrum, but different orchids. We started to, to see if from the roots we can obtain fungal cultures and then pu purify the cultures. And afterwards with this uh, genetic material, we submitted to uh, and fungi identification, isolating the DNA, the, you know, and amplification uh, and doing the amplification of a special region to test if we have mycorrhizal fungi. So there, after that, when we had the mycorrhizal fungi identified, we did a germination as SI with um, seeds from Epidendrum secundum. So we had this plant in the orchid greenhouse from our university, we collect the capsules with seeds we also checked if the seeds were in good conditions. And afterwards we did an experiment with four treatments. We used the uh, well-known Murashige scoop, uh, scoop medium uh, that has all the nutrients. And also we did uh, the experiment with a minimum medium oatmeal agar with the, the two mycorrhizal fungi we isolate. The, this is the first mycorrhizal fungi, the second mycorrhizal fungi and the control just the old milag are the minimum medium. So we had an enriched medium, a minimum medium, and minimum medium with two mycorrhizal fungi. Well, I would like to present very quickly the results. We, uh, we managed to isolate some fungi from different orchid species that were uh, collected in different uh, in different uh, ecosystems. One was up uh, 2,500 meters above the sea level. The other one was higher at 3,000 meters above the sea level. So we had this, this fungi. But the ones that are mycorrhizal was Ceratobacidium and Sebacina vermifera. The other are from the soil. The other, as you see, we have Fusarium. And the other are, are not. Uh, belonging to this uh, special gender. So we have these two fungi and we decided to test these two fungi as germination promoters. So 
we did the experiment with uh, the seeds from Epidendrum secundum. We started to check the, the shape of the seeds during this, uh, this essay that took 90 days. And we did some uh, qualification regarding the state of the seed. So the higher qualification was with we saw the seed in a process of germination with the first leaf and uh, showing development. And obviously the minimum uh, po uh, point was when the seed was intact, no, no germination at all. So as, we, as you can see in the, in the medium uh, enriched, the Mura Sig school, all the, the seeds regarded in the same status. The germination was not positive. We don't have germination in Murashige Scoop in this time frame in 90 days. In the minimum medium and uh, old middle agar, we have a uh, 16% of the seeds with a little evidence of germination, and the higher rate was reached with the medium and reached with fungi. So that was a uh, very interesting result. And as you can see, this is the, the final uh, stage of our experiment. The, the Mura Sigues Cook didn't have germination in 90 days. Um, maybe if we leave it for more time, we will see the germination in this medium. But we see that the fungi um, make the seeds grow. So that is important. We have uh, statistics, the uh, difference between the groups. And uh, we can tell that the mycorrhizal fungi make the, the germination uh, quicker regarding the, the media without this, this fungi. These uh, facts allow us to present a, a paper that was published in 2019 and is available. And if somebody wants this paper, I, I can send it to you. Uh, and uh, that was for me a very, uh, a uh, nice experience because I got in contact with many, many scientists uh, that are interested in uh, orchids uh, biodiversity and also in plant fungi relationships. So I'm very glad for this uh, collaboration um, process we did because we work it between Ecuadorian University and also one dear colleague from Germany that helped us with the molecular bi uh, biology tools. And uh, after this experience, we decided, well, as I told you, I'm a chemist, so I, I'm really interested in, in the potential of orchids as a source of uh, um, secondary metabolites, useful secondary metabolites. So we, uh, we started to research, to do our, a little research, still on, ongoing, still in process, regarding the potential of orchids as a source of secondary metabolites. That's not a new idea, of course, because many orchids are used in traditional medicines and um, we find uh, some uh, ma many examples of orchids that uh, are useful for treating diseases because of the production of secondary metabolites. For instance, the genus Dendrobium, that is also very uh, well distributed in India. Uh, it's uh, rich in secondary metabolites the alkaloids, polyphenols, polysaccharides that are uh, active against gastritis, diabetes, cancer, etc. So we have a very, very nice uh, subject for studying uh, the production of secondary metabolites. But the thing is, we know that for this approach, we need also to uh, to study with the, uh, a chemical approach, but also we need to preserve the orchids. So we have a, like a dilemma. We need to, uh, to be very effective for these studies because we cannot uh, use uh, many, many big quantity of plants. We need to be uh, effective and also to offer a way for not depleting the, the natural uh, populations of orchids in this approach. So, Obviously, as uh, other plants, orchids produce secondary metabolites as a defense mechanism uh, for uh, also for interaction with the fungi and other uh, insects, etc. But also to um, 
to adapt to different uh, ecosystems. Orchids uh, has many, many interest, interesting strategies that, to attract pollinators. They produce uh, volatiles, they, uh, they have a very interesting approach. That's why the, these um, studies has to be linked with the way that orchids uh, interact with the, their ecosystems. Otherwise, we are just facing uh, uh, the approach that, that was used, I think, 20 years ago, that plants just produce uh, metabolites, and we need to understand also the, this scenario uh, in order to preserve the plants too. So, well, one of the most interesting uh, way that plants uh, um, are related with uh, other species and also they, uh, the way that they defend uh, from stress are the productions of reactive oxygen species, reactive oxygen species, I'm sorry. And uh, oxygen can uh, be changed as a, as a radical be, uh, um, from different uh, mechanisms that are of uh, redox uh, reactions that uh, occurs at uh, the mitochondria of chloroplasts. So many species so, uh, such as singlet oxygen or superoxide radical, etc., they are formed in the orchids uh, and in the plant's metabolism. And they, they don't affect the plants, but uh, this has to, uh, the, this species doesn't not, uh, does not affect the plant if the plant has a balance between the production of reactive oxygen species and antioxidants. So if the plant has a good balance, the, these species will not affect it. But if the plant has a low production of uh, phenolic compounds of uh, antioxidant enzymes, then uh, we will notice an, uh, a, a problem, an affectation. But fortunately, plants has a very effective production of phenolic compounds and we know these compounds are beneficial to even uh, to our health because if we consume regularly uh, antioxidant compounds we will have also the benefit of uh, tackle the bad effects of reactive oxygen species that's why these compounds are um, a subject of, of study for the getting to know the bioactivity of plants and the potential as a source of secondary metabolites. So orchids, since orchids grow in different environments, we know they are adapted to different uh, uh, conditions, so they must have good defenses. So they must uh, produce uh, um, many antioxidant secondary metabolites to cope with uh, these adaptations to ecosystems. But, but uh, we need to um, we need to think that we cannot go and take uh, plants from the rainforest uh, in a in a lot of uh, quantity for for extracting the the metabolites. We need to 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 think in a strategy to avoid uh, taking the plant from the nature and uh, to do it uh, also to produce biomass in the lab. That's why we think the establishment of in vitro cultures ensure the biomass production with, uh, uh, for these studies without threatening wild population. That's why we also plan, uh, planned this uh, last uh, work that I will tell you briefly, because we mm, also we uh, went uh, to study Epidendrum secundum, this plant because it's very abundant in our in in our region and we wanted to know how this plant develops enzymatic and non-enzymatic antioxidant strategies and related with the antioxidant productions so we evaluate uh, the phenolic content flavonoid content and also the capacity of scavenging a free radical like uh, abts radical tested in organic extracts. And also we made aqueous extracts to test the enzymatic activity, ascorbate, ascorbate peroxidase and catalase per, uh, activities. We um, compared both uh, strategies as a production of, uh, as uh, related to antioxidant activity from epidendrum secundum. 
So the, mm, these are the results. As you can see, well, we compared the, the, plant, the plant growth in our, in our greenhouse from the in vitro cultures we had also in our lab. So, well, uh, we have the phenolic contents. It was higher in the plant grow in natural conditions. Also, the flavonoids are higher in the plants in natural conditions. The scavenging activity also of uh, free radical was not notably higher in the in the plant that grows in in natural conditions and also we test the uh, antimicrobial activity so our two strain from a, a gram positive uh, bacteria and gram negative bacteria and we see that the activity from both the plant uh, the natural plant and the in vitro cultures are um, comparable and they are um, specific towards Staphylococcus aureus. The both plants were not active towards um, Echerichia coli. So we have two facts that are interesting and they may lead to further studies. We have antioxidant activity and also antimicrobial activity from both biomass, from the plant and from, uh, from the uh, plant uh, growing in natural conditions and from the in vitro culture. And regarding the uh, enzymatic activity from aqueous extracts, we have some interesting situation because the ascorbate peroxidase, as we expected, was higher in the uh, plant growing in natural condition, but the catalase activity was higher in the in vitro culture. We made uh, our research to interpret this result, to interpret this result, and we found that this activity is triggered by some chemical um, some some chemical uh, interaction between plants. So we think that the medium, when it's formulated with uh, growth uh, factors and with the uh, rooting factors, it can trigger this activity. So uh, these finds were uh, collected and we could present a technical note in the South African Journal of Botany. And we have also the second paper published recently. So I'm really, really happy to share with you because, uh, we, you know, I think we uh, face the same challenges for our country. It's difficult to do uh, research and we need to, to make it right. So I'm very happy because I, I'm sharing with you this new uh, product of, uh, of our group and we want to, to share to, to the scientific community for receiving their inputs and also to see if we can do better with, uh, with collaboration because I think that's the way we need to do research. And at the end, uh, we have a um, very interesting research subject here. We have the possibility of uh, do research with fungi because the mycorrhizal fungi are very special genera that promote the germination of, of orchids and also they will improve uh, their nutrition uh, functions. So obviously that's a further <laughs> topic of research, but at the moment we uh, tested the, the germination of Epidendrum secundum uh, in, that was influenced notably for the relationship with fungi. And uh, we, uh, these uh, results can be translated for optimizing um, germination protocols for orchids. And also the, we uh, tested the possibility of doing um, bioactivity research with the orchid, but we uh, point out that it's necessary to uh, develop it, always comparing with in vitro cultures because we need to uh, generate biomass without threatening the plant. And well, uh, this is the end of my uh, um, of my speech that I would like to share with you. I have to acknowledge my group because obviously the uh, it's very important that in our group. Uh, we want to motivate young students uh, to join us in this uh, topic of research that, as I told you at the beginning, shows that we have many, many things to study and uh, another world is possible, as the, uh, this uh, beautiful uh, painting said, that is from a, Ch a Chilean painter. And we have a world with, with all of us fit. 
the people who works in a very big uh, groups and people with a, a more humble contribution, but all of us, we can do better. We can share our notice for uh, making our, our world better. Also, I would like to thank deeply the possibility of working with the South African Journal of Botany because it was for me uh, the key point to starting getting to know scientists from India. I would like to, to have a moment to thank Dr. Pa Dr. Paromik Bhattacharya because he invited me to join his group, Dr. Subritya Gupta, and uh, also Dr. Nitika because they uh, were so generous and they uh, called me to join these important initiatives that are uh, focused in uh, the studies in, of orchids. And uh, we really, uh, in South America, we really need to, uh, to establish these bonds for uh, having our notes also shared with the world. So thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And also <laughs> another result of the, of this work has been in inspiring other people. For instance, um, my son, he is not a chemist, he's not a biologist, but he la he's uh, an artist and he started to come with me to the college and, and he's also inspired by orchids for doing his work. <laughs> and uh, at the end, I just wanted to invite all of you to visit me because uh, I live in a beautiful city that is uh, the third city in importance in Ecuador and has a very beautiful uh, center that, uh, that, has, uh, that has been recognized uh, by the UNESCO, like our World Heritage. And this is my university, Universidad de Cuenca. So please, if you have the opportunity, come visit me and I will be very happy to show you my orchid greenhouse and to be with you. Thank you so much for your uh, patience with me, with my English, and thank you for uh, these opportunities to share with you my, my experience. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Maria, and it was wonderful hearing to your talk and the beautiful insights through ORCID and the plant symbiotic relationships, because these are the most important topics and the need of the art to conserve the biodiversity. So all the topics are really interesting. And today, uh, this talk, I think, would inspire everyone to go for diversity, biodiversity conservation, and all the practices that would like flourish all these orchids beautifully. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone. And the house is now open for discussion. If you have any queries, please come forward. And you can also unmute yourself and ask the questions. Thank you so much for your uh, patience and your attention. And if you have some questions, you can uh, uh, leave it to me uh, in the chat or uh, in person. <laughs> so. Dr. Maria, it was an excellent talk. I really enjoyed your talk very much. Let me ask you one thing. What do you mean by otro mundo es possible? Uh -huh. Another world is possible, is the translation in, in English. Uh, you know, this painting is a very beautiful one because uh, it shows that all of us, people from uh, South America, from India, from, uh, from the developed countries, all of us, we have a space in the world. And that, you know, this concept, uh, on my opinion, is at the moment, at the special moment we live uh, as uh, as planet is not uh, understood because some people want to impose their their ideas. They want to impose their ways of being, and uh, we want to, we need to to remember this that we are in this world, and this world has a space for all of us. So we we need to change the the ideas so from others that they want to impose their viewpoints. And we want to uh, we are uh, that's my my idea. We we have we all have a space in this world, so we have to change the the the, the viewpoint of other people that want to impose the way of thinking. So we need to to stick together for making a better world. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. <laughs> ah, Sunita, uh, I'm sorry, Professor. I will uh, share. Uh, I will. Uh, reply a question that is in the chat. Sunita Hetz uh, 
ask which are met which metabolites are characterized. Well, Sunita, that's the uh, next part of our of our work because at the moment we just uh, uh, quantified total phenolic content, total flavonoid content, and uh, we didn't have the tools for you know for doing HPLC MS because uh, that's uh, that will be our second uh, point. We will need to to go for uh, chromatographic methods to uh, new the to know especially uh, the specific metabolites. So I I uh, I'm I'm going to for this uh, next uh, step. Okay. I will, I will Good collect. Evening, yes, please. Uh, First of all, thank you so much, ma'am, for your this presentation, ma'am. Can I have? Uh, can I ask a question? Of course. Uh, ma'am, uh, like uh, my question is like: Is there any anti-cancerous property or any anti-angiogenic property? Did you uh, find in the? Yeah, uh, plants. Yeah, we'll see. Now I am working on that. Um, so, I'm sorry, uh, Doctor Hanifi. Could you please repeat your question? I couldn't uh, hear it completely. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Now, am I audible to you or not? Hello, ma'am. May I audible yes. or? Not? Oh, it's it's a it's a problem at the moment. Could you please uh, write in the chat your question? Uh, I, I have another one. Uh, ah, yeah. Like Rhizobium fungal mycorrhizae, have any host specific with orchid species? Uh, well, that's a very good question. And uh, as far as I know, because as I told you, I'm a chemist, but I try to be uh, keep uh, with this work. I read uh, many works about uh, mycorrhizal fungi and some of them have, have a specific hosts. Some of them, they, they are specific for, for um, orchid genera. And uh, this is a topic still ongoing. We have to do more research in mycorrhizal fungi. Uh, we as isolate fungi from different uh, orchid species and just one of them was uh, for uh, another epidendrum species. And we worked, but the two fungi were were good, were were um, uh, effective. And but the the specificity, the specificity. I'm sorry, that that is a a, spe, a topic uh, that has to be researched uh, with uh, further and uh, more specific tools too. I will Professor, place my. I yeah, yeah, I think the previous question, it highlights the like, have you carried out any type of work related to the anti-cancerous properties? Ah, the anti-cancer properties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I have not uh, do this approach. No, because I don't have the, for doing uh, anti-cancer research, you need to have uh, uh, cell lines and uh, do this kind of, of approach and uh, in, for in vitro processes. So unfortunately, I don't have these uh, resources in my lab. So no, no, I, I haven't done that. <laughs> yeah, ma'am. Uh, yeah, that, that was my question. Thank you, ma'am, oh. for answering me. Thank you, Dr. Hanafi. Now, I'm working on the identification of some of the anti-angiogenic or anti-cancer uh, phytochemicals. Oh. oh, nice. From different, different Indian medicinal plants. So that's why I, uh, just you show the oh. slides and my interest came into orchid. That's why I asked me. So. Oh, thank you so much. You know, uh, here in Ecuador, I am in contact with some with a one group that uh, uh, is working in in this approach for anti-cancer uh, activities. So sometimes we do collaborations, but uh, I don't have the uh, the facilities for doing this research. So, well, we do it here in Ecuador. So if you are interested, also I can uh, share with you the the contacts. Uh, one more oh, thing, okay. Dr. Maria. Actually. Yes. Just like uh, I'm uh, an undergraduate student, like BSc third year. So 
when, when time will come i'll definitely collaborate with you for that kind of ng and the excellent thank you ma'am thank you so much okay okay yes yes so i want to tell you one of the professor mm -hmm. from rajshahi university bangladesh she is attending your lecture ah uh, yeah dr tanzimia tanzamia yasmin hello yasmin ma'am hello yes 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 i'm listening yes 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 so i am regularly going to Ra rashia university and she is also regularly coming in india ah nice very nice yes yes, yes. so like yes. that now you come to india we'll see that you will come to india thank you so much that will be a dream come true for me <laughs> thank you very much thanks yes. a lot okay okay Okay. Thank you so much, <laughs> Professor Maria. So I have a question. Like uh, you have tested uh, the activity of Staphylococ uh, Staphylococcus aureus. So basically, it was uh, like active against that strain. So that is yes. basically gram positive strain. And uh, the yeah, and um, I think no activity was recorded against the gram negative one. So. <laughs> Yeah. So, have you extended that study to another gram-negative species other than Escherichia coli? No, 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 no. And uh, I have to do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We did just, uh, you know, like a test for, uh, like a screening. So that's why we use just uh, one uh, gram positive and one ne uh, negative, and we didn't uh, extend it for other strains. So, but uh, with these results, I think it's a very, very good insight. Thank you, Nitik. I will do it. <laughs> yes. Because, uh, Professor, one thing, because uh, if we talk about a broad perspective, we talk about like uh, targeting the gram positive as well as the gram negative. So if it could like target some gram negative species also, so it can broaden the sphere particularly. So it of would course. be a very like a broadened sphere of antimicrobial activity targeting the both the categories related to gram positive as well as the gram negative. Excellent. So that was my perspective. Thank you Thank so you. much. It was wonderful listening to you. And Thank over you. to our president for his vote of thanks. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, really, today it was a a uh, sweet feast to us mm -hmm. and uh, really everyone has enjoyed and as uh, i have told earlier it will be circulated throughout the india out of the india because ma'am we have whatsapp group uh, of bangladesh scientist nepal scientist maldiv dubai china Indonesia and many other countries. Thank you, sir. So it will be circulated everywhere, and uh, even we'll be regularly in touch with you. Thanks a lot. And we will work together. I am happy to learn that you are closely associated with the Association of Medicinal Plant. Yes, yes, yes. It is. So uh, many scientists in India are also working on medicinal plants. Yes. So we'll have one collaborative lecture only for the scientists working on medicinal plants. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. That means, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And thank you all <laughs> for interacting with the ma'am and attending this lecture. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. So good night. Take care. And thank you, Professor Maria. And uh, Professor Maria has already posted her uh, mail address in the chat box. If you want to further collaborate or have any queries regarding her lecture, you can just contact her up. And thank you so much, Professor. And we'll be, stay, we'll be staying connected for the further talks and your further research findings. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much thank for you. this opportunity. I'm really glad and honored.